Let's talk with a strong voice for conservatives in the global arena as president of Counterpoint Institute for Policy Research and Education, Dr. Shea Bradley Farrell. Welcome to Victory News. Can't wait to hear your take on the damage to the Nord Stream pipelines in Baltic Sea. Do you think this, this happened and how will it affect relationships between Russia and Western Europe? Well, Greg, most likely it is sabotage. Uh, I don't think it's likely that you get three leaks in the same pipeline at the same time. But the broader picture is that Putin and Russia have actually been reducing natural gas flow to Europe since before he even put troops on the border uh, of Ukraine. He started doing that last summer, I believe, in a very strategic move, and has continued to do that, uh, continuing to squeeze Europe uh, and making the energy crisis that they already had much worse, until we have a 90% reduction in natural gas from Russia to the EU today. Um, at the same time, though, Russia Gazprom, its state-owned energy giant, has made a 42 billion record dollar, excuse me, 42 billion dollar record profit in the first half of this year, with a 10 billion dollar dividend to the Kremlin. Um, so Russia is in a good position, I believe, while Europe is actually facing a very cold and dark winter. And the broader uh, picture of that as well is industries having to close down, people who don't know where their paychecks are coming from, especially as uh, Europe is thinking about, or not thinking about, will embargo Russian oil as well in the coming months. Yeah, so much for sanctions, they seem to be doing well. Let's switch over now and talk yes. about China and their presence in America. How have we allowed them to gain major advantages on the United States economically and other ways? Well, can I just mention, related to your last topic, uh, Biden's policies and so-called sanctions that you just mentioned actually have pushed China and Russia into a stronger economic alliance, where China uh, made a 10-year, $80 billion oil and gas deal with Russia um, in February of this year. And I mention that because it's giving China the power uh, economically that it needs to usurp the United States on the world stage. Um, this is also a very bad problem, what you have mentioned about their infiltration into the United States. We need to revamp our counterintelligence operations against China. We also need somebody in the State Department who goes to work every day trying to counteract China's infiltration of the United States. There is nobody right now that is focused specifically on that. Uh, Reagan did that against the Russians, and I think it would work. So as a security expert, that's how you would say our government should be handling America's relationship with China? Have somebody specifically targeting that? Absolutely. Uh, most, most of all, revamping those counterintelligence operations. Um, I remember a couple of years ago that the Chinese actually did a report on which American governors were more favorable towards the Chinese. And this was also very strategic. Um, instead of just uh, focusing on hitting us on a federal level, they're looking to also infiltrate and get information on a state and local level. That'd be interesting to know. I'd like to see that report. I'd like to know about my governor. Widespread protests now continue across the nation of Iran, all sparked by the death of the 22-year-old Masa Amini wearing her job, hijab improperly. Now, that error resulted in her arrest, beating, and death. Do you see the citizens of Iran succeeding in their efforts against the ruling government? And how should we as Americans respond to the protest? Or how should our government respond? That's a very sad thing. I've spent a lot of time in that part of the world. I do not see them succeeding simply because Iran is a brutal regime and has been for decades. Um, the U.S., if they should step up and support uh, revolutionary efforts that were in our interest, but I just don't see that happening, Greg, because I believe we have very weak leadership in the White House and in our State Department. I have to agree with you, sadly. I have to agree with you. Shea Bradley Farrell will be back to you in just a moment. Thanks for the insight. All right, a Freedom of Information Act request has found the United States Postal Service monitored Americans focused on the Second Amendment and Joe Biden's election. The apparent spying took place September 2020 to April 2021, with the Postal Service tracking gun right activists in Richmond, Virginia, as well as so-called, quote, far-right groups headed to D.C. after Joe Biden's election. 
As a result of the spying, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service raided the home of Florida resident Brian Colfage, a triple amputee veteran who is an official with the organization, quote, We Build the Wall. The agents who conducted the raid were from New York and armed with guns. They never contacted U.S. federal marshals in Florida until Colfage was already loaded into the car. Yet another example of a government agency apparently gone rogue. Let's talk with Shea Bradley Farrell once again. Shea, a minimum of two million illegals have crossed our southern border this year. It's causing chaos, a fentanyl disaster in America, a human trafficking nightmare. What in the world would motivate Joe Biden and the White House to continue this insanity? Well, I do believe it is uh, to shift the political demographics. And, Greg, I have been down to the border several times, uh, unlike our administration, to see actually what was going on there. And I will tell you that it is chaos. It is not the narrative that Biden puts forth as humane, orderly, and safe. We know that it is not for American communities. I will like, would like to emphasize that it is also not the case for illegal immigrants. The uh, CBP is no longer reporting the uh, deaths of illegal immigrants crossing over our border since Biden came into office, simply because, and this is what my sources tell me over and over on the border, the deaths are so high. Um, I have personally seen the stash houses, the drop houses, where the Mexican cartel puts the illegal immigrants before trafficking them. And in the words of a senior Border Patrol officer uh, to me, he said, these are places where bad things happen. Women are raped, people are killed, uh, people are exploited for more cash from their families. And uh, another agent said, we're tired of picking up dead bodies. Yeah, when we can confirm what you're saying is true. Our reporters have been down there and we've reported on ourselves. You wrote a commentary on EuropeanConservative.com that, quote, it's time to negotiate peace between Ukraine and Russia. Now, that's not a popular point of view with our U.S. leadership or many of our allies. Tell us why it's time. <laughs> No, it's not. And I will mention it first came out in the Washington Times last Monday, last week. Um, we are pouring billions of dollars into a country that is not a NATO ally. This doesn't mean I don't stand for Ukrainian sovereignty. I do. But we're in a recession and we have no idea where most of that money is going. We don't have accountability mechanisms in place for it. At the same time, we mentioned earlier, Europe is getting ready to hit this huge energy crisis. Uh, China and Russia have strengthened alliances, which is not good for the United States ongoing. And um, it's just a mess overall. Okay, now, Shay, you grew up in a military family and you've seen policies like mandatory COVID vaccine, take out veterans, and now woke policies on pronouns and eliminating terms like mother and father in the Air Force Academy. What do you see it doing to the readiness and effectiveness to defend our own nation? Well, the military's number one per per purpose is combat power. And none of these so-called progressive policies have anything to do uh, with advancing that. It's very concerning to me. Um, I think that the United States right now needs to be strengthening our military. but. To go back to something we were talking about, we're sending military equipment to Ukraine that we are actually um, having a low, a low uh, amount of right now. I can't think of the word, but we are in need of these supplies that we're sending over to Ukraine. Yeah, we're depleting our own supplies just like we're doing with the strategic oil reserve. Now, tell us about the Counterpoint Institute and what you're accomplishing there. Well, we expose the truth about these issues that you and I are talking about now. And as I mentioned, we go to the problem. Uh, we go to the border to investigate what's going on. I have been in Ukrainian refugee, uh, refugee centers in uh, Europe, in Hungary specifically. So I know what's actually happening there to the Ukrainians. We bring that information back to educate Americans and also to our leaders on Capitol Hill to drive public policy change. Okay, now in a moment we're going to be covering Vice President Harris's visit to the DMZ between North and South Korea. Uh, I don't know how long this answer will take, but what's your assessment of her foreign policy <laughs> diplomatic skills? Uh, in a word, I don't really think that she has any foreign policy skills. She's gone overseas and been an incoherent and rambling and really embarrassed us. 
uh, which has added to the confusion and turmoil that I believe the Biden administration put on us uh, first by withdrawing from Afghanistan in the way we did leaving Americans to die and allies to die. And I'm sorry to be so negative. I believe in hope. Uh, this is just the facts, and I want people to understand them. It's uh, also why I think we need to negotiate peace. As I said, in Ukraine, we need to step up as with U.S. leadership and take charge of this. I absolutely agree. Shay Bradley Farrell, thank you so much for being with us on the news today and your insight into all these issues. Thank you, Greg.